Coming up on OWL TV News, find out how many students are actually making it out to the polls this November. With rising Zika rates all over South Florida, OWL TV has your inside scoop for prevention. And finally, find out how much you should be spending on textbooks. Hi, I'm Jessica Maduker. Thank you for joining us. With this year being the craziest election year yet, we asked our FAU students their thoughts on their choice. Jennifer Vidal has a report. Hello, my name is Jennifer Vidal. This is Owl TV News, and we're here to tell you what FAU thinks about this year's election. Voting, an important right that U.S. citizens use to elect our next president. Studies have shown that 25% of voters are seen as undecided, including 14% of people who are choosing neither candidates. Why are so many Americans undecided this year? I think that people tend to, at least what's reflected in the press, that people are not really fond of either candidate. And they're trying to decide whether to stay home or whether to support a party that they have supported in the past. To find out, we asked someone who is undecided. Meet Damian Michael, an exercise and health major here at FAU. He has some issues with the election this year. The main dislikes I have against the two parties is the constant conflict anytime I turn on any news station or depending on what news station I watch, it's always discrediting one or the other. Being an undecided voter, Damian is looking for certain qualities in the candidates. When the candidate is honest and uses their take on a certain matter, to apply it to as many people as possible. As the election day approaches, we asked student voters what they thought of the election. To be honest, I have no idea because both candidates are lunatics. I'd probably vote for Hillary Clinton right now just because compared to Trump, seems like the better candidate. I'm not sure, maybe Trump, but not Hillary. Because I just hear a lot of bad things about Hillary that she's like kind of crazy and lies, but Trump's not that much better. I'm going to vote for myself, but other, because uh, I don't know much about politics. With Clinton at 46% and Trump at 44, clearly it's anyone's game. This is Jennifer Vidal from Owl TV News signing out. Thank you, Jennifer. It is pivotal to get informed and to get out and vote this November. With the presidential election drawing near, Zika is also on the prowl. Owls are still worried about the threatening rates in South Florida. Reporter Benjamin Paley has a report. Hello, Owls. My name is Benjamin Paley, and this is an Owl TV special feature on the Zika virus. Zika. We have all heard about it, but how much do we really know about the virus that has been taking the world over by storm? I'm here with Nizira. She is a health professionals major, and she's going to tell us a little bit about what she knows about Zika. In my knowledge, um, it just started as a thing that mosquitoes carry on that affected pregnancy. But it started, but now for the U.S. started to become like very global and they're trying to find a cure for it. Hopefully, but it's part of an RNA um, kind of virus, virus, so they hopefully can find a cure because we've been killing like RNA virus for like years. Uh, it causes deformities with uh, children uh, when a pregnant woman has it. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it has something to do with their head, mm -hmm. like being shaped. Okay. Oddly. Let's see, the Zika virus. What I know about it is that it really only affects pregnant women if you get bit by it. Other than that, everyone's good. We know it's very dangerous to pregnant women and um, that it takes a lot to recover from if you get it, but I'm not really sure anything else. And although I don't know much, I know that if you're infected and you get bitten by another mosquito, now that mosquito's infected, and can spread it to someone else. What do you guys know about Zika? Not much, just that it's like a harmful thing to your body, maybe, yeah? Okay. Uh, I know that when you have it, if you're not pregnant, it just passes through, like it feels like you have the flu. Oh. And um, yeah, it's not really 
Like, if you're not pregnant, you don't really have to worry about it. But you would be a carrier. That's, that's really all I know, though. To find the answers for some of our questions about Zika, we got the opportunity to sit down with Dr. Robert Dollinger, Acting Chief Medical Officer of Student Health Services here at Florida Atlantic University. Zika is a virus that is transmitted through the Aedes mosquito. Zika may also be transmitted through sexual contact by having sex with somebody who's been infected with this uh, Zika virus and sometimes even through blood transfusions. Zika has been uh, around for, for many, many years and only recently has it become uh, uh, almost endemic in the United States and specifically South Florida. Zika actually is found in, in many countries of the world, mostly in tropical climates, uh, very common in the Caribbean and South America where, where most of the infections have, are currently and where the CDC has uh, issued travel advisories. Only one in five people that are uh, you know, infected with Zika actually develop symptoms. Symptoms are relatively mild, very similar to what you would see in a virus uh, infection. This includes fever, conjunctivitis or red eyes, a rash, and some joint pain. Zika is more scary, particularly for women who are pregnant, and the fact that it causes severe birth defects like microcephaly, uh, and sometimes even beyond the ray and other neurologic s symptoms. So the hope is that we will soon have a, uh, a medication, which will be an antiviral, that will cure Zika, uh, kill the Zika virus. However, until we have that, the best way is prevention. It behooves all of us to do our part in limiting the, the breeding of mosquitoes and each of us to make sure we're doing everything we can using insect repellents, wearing long clothing, um, making sure that we minimize time at the sunrise and, and sundown uh, so we're not exposing ourselves or decrease, at least decrease our risk to getting uh, bitten by mosquitoes. Everyone should be concerned about any uh, infectious disease, particularly stuff that's relatively local. However, there's no need for panic or fear. Uh, we've dealt with much more serious infections in the past and, and, and we will deal with this one as well. Students can visit the student health services uh, if they're concerned that they may have uh, been exposed to Zika. If indeed, you know, the clinician that you see feels that you do have Zika or may have uh, increased risk of having Zika, there is a blood test that we can order that will confirm whether or not you have Zika. Thank you so much to Dr. Dollinger for taking the time out of his day to speak with us about the basics of the Zika virus. If you would like more information about Zika, please visit the Center for Disease Control website. Well, Owls, that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great day. Say you didn't have to buy textbooks. What would you spend that money on? Reporter Justin Esperado has more on that. One of the biggest concerns for college students has to be the cost especially the cost of textbooks. Many believe textbooks have become dated and we should move towards a cheaper option like ebooks. So just exactly how much are some students spending on textbooks? So how much money have you spent on textbooks this semester? A lot, probably like $300. This semester I spent almost $700 on textbooks. Uh, this semester I've spent about $360. Um, I would say around $250. Um, 150 for three books. Probably like 1000 I've spent actually $44 just now. I just came out of the textbook store. And what about your whole college career? Well, I'm a freshman and it's first semester, so $300. <laughs> like a good 8000 a semester. This is my first semester, so just 360 right now. Maybe 650 Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm a freshman that just started. Well, I'm a freshman, so probably like 10000 Well, in my whole college career, I actually sold books to college students. So I never had to purchase any books. I actually had affordable book options. The College Board estimates that students can spend up to $1,200 a year on textbooks and supplies. A single textbook can cost at least $200. So what would those students do with that money if they didn't have to spend it on textbooks? Um, oh, wow, the options are limitless. I don't know. I would spend it on clothes or food <laughs> or anything else. <laughs> I'd probably spend it on food. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, nah, nah, I probably would buy clothes, more clothes. Uh, to be honest, I'd probably spend it on groceries and that's about it because I really like to eat. Um, I'd probably put it into an interest account and watch it compound. And see, after about 12 years, I would uh, probably become a millionaire. Probably save it to combat the rising 
school debt that's going to creep up my butt. <laughs> well, what would I do with that money? I would most likely invest it into myself and my business. That's uh, the best way to do it. You know, don't waste your money. College is too expensive to be wasting your money. Signing off for LTV, this is Justin Espartero reporting. Last week, student government sponsored three viewing parties in Jupiter, Boca, and Davie. Students participated in interactive games, conversations, and were even able to register to vote. FAU Homecoming is right around the corner, and for more information on events, teams, and how to get involved, visit www.fau.edu forward slash homecoming. That's all we have for today, Owls. I'm Jessica Duker signing off. And remember to keep in touch with us on our social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.